Hello again, I'm Rick Carnes, president of the Songwriters Guild of America. And I'm Adam Mitchell, board member of the Songwriters Guild of America. And we're going to talk about music publishers today. Uh, Adam and I both have been professional songwriters. Well, Adam is so much older than I am. Adam, <laughs> 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 no, actually, we, we've been around a long time. We've both had several publishing deals. I know I've had like six or something. I think me, just three. Just three. Well, they, see, they liked you more than me. <laughs> uh, and what music publishers do is kind of um, confusing for new songwriters uh, because they're not probably in your town, you know. And Nashville is a whole town full of music publishers, and I was just 200 miles up the road in Memphis, and I'd never heard of a music publisher, till one night a disc jockey came in and heard one of my songs that I was playing live, and he said, who has the publishing on that song? I said, what does that mean? Yeah. He says, who owns the publishing rights to the song? I said, once again, I don't know what you're talking about. He said, well, have you ever seen a copyright symbol on some sheet music or something that says copyright, uh, you know, EMI music, uh, 1995 or something? I said, yeah, I've seen that. He said, well, those people own the publishing rights to that song. Which is approximately half of the value, well, it's exactly half of the income that any song generates, whether it's from mechanical rights, which means if you sell a CD or you sell music, cheap music, which you know very much, or from airplay, or that's performance rights. Uh, performance rights, yeah. right? But they own they own half. They own half. So what happens is a songwriter, you write a song, you take it to a music publishing company, who is in the business of getting the song recorded, doing the sheet music, selling the rights to the song to. Uh, movies, TV, commercials, and they keep half of the money in return for helping you demo the song, uh, helping you pay for your demos, paying for your demos, yeah. pitching your songs, and very importantly for guys like us, they pay you a salary. It's called a draw. It's money that is from future um, an royalties, advance against an future. advance against future royalties. So, for instance, they might give you fifty thousand dollars. Uh, a year based on money that they're going to take from your royalties when you get a song cut. And in order for them to do that, they have to anticipate that they will make that much money right. from being able to get your songs cut and hopefully they believe they'll also make more or they wouldn't be doing it in the first place and putting their money at risk. <clears throat> One of the things that I, I'm, you know, we need to talk about what it was like writing for publishers because when I know when we both first started out, there were a lot of really big music publishers. Yeah. The first well, also we should we should point out when you write a song, if you have not officially signed with another music publisher, you automatically own own the song. You own all the song. You own your own publishing. Yes, which is the only reason you can sign it away in the first place. And if you happen to get a song cut by yourself, you make twice as much money. Because you can keep the publisher. Because you can keep the writer's half and the publisher's half. And that's one of the services that the Songwriters Guild offers. We administer publishing, so you could actually be your own music publisher, and the Songwriters Guild, uh, if you choose them as your administrator, can do the paperwork for you. Right. Uh, when I first signed with the music publisher, there were 116 writers on staff at yeah. the music publisher. Yeah. And the benefit that I got from that more than anything else was I got to sit in the room with some of the great songwriters oh, sure. of the town sure. and learn from them. Yeah, that yeah. was a great experience. Yeah, they kept me alive for three years before I ever really got any serious cuts. Yeah, too. yeah. And I think it's also true now that at that time it was easier. People would would kind of stick with you. I mean, it was certainly true of artists. Uh, you know, record companies used to sign artists that they believed in. And for example, when they signed Prince, they knew he wasn't going to sell any records for the first three records. As it turns out, he didn't. But they believed in him as an artist, and and that he, they believed eventually he would be a star. Publishers used to be more that way, I would say. Wouldn't you say, Rick? Than yes, Kevin. Right music piracy has impacted the music publishing business very negatively. And because of that, they don't have the kind of money that they used to have to advance money to you to keep you alive for a few years while you learn to write and also while you developed your contacts in the industry mm -hmm. and particularly like contacts with artists where you could sit in the room and write songs with the artists. Uh, Adam had a, a long relationship with Linda Ronstadt. Mm -hmm. And with uh, probably more as a co-writer, more particularly with Kiss. 
Yes. I co-wrote 10 songs for Kiss. And I see myself really not so much as, I mean, I've done a lot of co-writing, but I see myself as an individual writer, not really as a co-writer. But I've done it. And if you can get in the room and co-write with the artist, uh, it gets, yeah, it's tremendously advantageous because you may be at a time in your career when you're back to owning your own publishing, you're not signed with a publisher, and if you can get in with a good artist, which in, that was the case with me and Kiss, um, then you could get to keep twice as much money. So that's one of the aspects of songwriting. I think we should also, when you said uh, they go out and pitch your song, yes. we should clarify that a little bit. Pitching a song means your 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 pitch uh, your song plugger, who's basically your your publisher or part of the publishing company. Your plugger is the guy who is responsible for saying, you know, I like that song, and I like that song. Let's go in and demo those. And then he takes those songs out, and he goes around to different artists, to record producers, and so on. And he plays them this song. And that's what's called pitching. He plays them a song, and then if they like the song, they'll cut it. And everyone's happy. If you're not with a publisher, that's the advantage of being with a publisher. If you're not with a publisher, then it's really important to develop those contacts yourself. Yes. And you can only do that slowly by, you know, getting to be a better writer, getting to be a better writer, getting out and played, uh, getting out and playing, people hearing your songs, and uh, having them say, wow, the networking. Guy, networking. They're really good. And then you develop those relationships. And in fact, a lot of the, the hits that I had when I was at Warner Brothers Publishing, some of them I got just by meeting either artists or record producers, you know, at a, at a party or, or playing in a club or something like that. Um, so that, that's basically what's meant by pitching a song. That's basically what the plugger at your company does. But in the end, well, here's another aspect. You don't necessarily have to sign away all of your publishing. You can do what's called the co-pub deal, in which case you keep half your publishing, which is one quarter of the total, half of the song for writing. You keep a quarter for yourself, and you only, you only uh, sell, as it were, the publisher another quarter. So you end up making 75% of the money. You make all of the writer's share and half, half of the, the publishing. publishing.